Hello everybody. How are you today? I hope you're, you're having a good time here at CNBO in 2011. It's been a great conference so far. Uh, this session is about Joomla site security. I call it Joomla Security 101. We're going to, to talk about the basic concepts of security and how to apply them. And I, I will try to get you from uh, novice to ninja in 30 odd minutes. I'm Nicolas. If you try to pronounce my last name, it will be pretty much impossible. It took Brian Timman two years to be somewhat close to pronouncing my name. It's Nicolas Dionysopoulos. Um, probably you know me as uh, the lead developer of Akiba Backup um, and a few other extensions, a lot of them actually. Um, so we have site security. What is site security? Is it Chuck Norris standing in front of our site, kicking everybody out? No, not really. Site security is not really about making your site unhackable, having a Chuck Norris inside. Uh, site security is all about making it a little harder for attackers to infiltrate the site, but not making it unhackable. I know this sounds very disappointing, but it is the sad truth. There is no such thing as an unhackable website. If anyone tells you that, they're lying. It's like saying that there is bug-free software. There isn't. We're all humans. Humans make mistakes, and this is where security vulnerabilities come from. So what can you do to secure your site? What can you put in front of your site to, to protect it from attackers? So, if you uh, look at a site conceptually, there are actually many layers of security. On the top, we have the incoming requests from the internet. And the first thing that hits those requests is a firewall. The firewall is controlled by your web hosting company. It is mostly targeted to avoiding uh, attacks on the operating uh, system level. They don't want to, to have uh, some very naughty people trying to screw over their, their web servers. Um, firewalls can also block some uh, of, the, uh, of the attack patterns against uh, applications, but it is not their primary design concern. So the next thing you have is the actual uh, web server security, the, what I, I call the global web server security, what it stands in, in the level of the web server software itself. Um, for example, uh, many people might have known an Apache extension called um, Mod Security, which is uh, a, most uh, like a firewall application to try to figure out if a, uh, if a request matches an attack pattern and stop it right dead on its tracks. Uh, there's also SQPHP, which is not a firewall. It is uh, a way to have uh, reasonable permissions on each and every site in a shared web host. If you have a good, a good uh, hosting company, they're most probably using either SQPHP or they're using Apache's mod IDK so that you have same permissions. Then you have uh, security at the site level using .hd access files. This is very interesting. This is something that you can do on all of your sites, and you can block a lot of attacks using that. Then you have Joomla. Joomla all by itself is a very secure application. Um, all, the, all the problems happen down there at the extensions level. So what we want to do is to have Joomla intercept attacks targeting extensions so that your site is more secure. Um, extensions, unless you're a developer, are out of your reach. It's code. If the developer has done a very good job, then there will be no security vulnerabilities. Uh, if they're human, like the rest of us, then probably they have for forgotten something, and there might be a security vulnerability here and there. Okay, so in this presentation, we're uh, mostly going to talk about these two layers, the .htaccess layer and, and the Joomla layer. 
This is what you can control as uh, set integrators. We're going to start with the basics, all the really basic stuff that we're all supposed to do without thinking, but usually we just forget all about it. Beginning with backups. Would you jump off an airplane without a parachute? No. Would you drive on the autobahn at 200 kilometers per hour without wearing a seat belt and without having an airbag on your car? No. The reason is that the crash could kill you. It's the same thing with, uh, with websites. A crash can happen and can be a very bad one. It doesn't mean that uh, someone hacked you. This is the most... Uh, uh, this is the least common cause of uh, actually having your site crashed. You might do something, something wrong on your site and you will lose months of work. So before you do anything, always have a backup. Have frequent tested backups. It's like um, all those guys who are uh, jumping off planes with parachutes, they're taking their parachutes every day before they, they jump off the airplane. You have to do that with backups as well. So, uh, as I say, the first three rules for uh, having a secure website is backup, backup, and backup. In case you didn't get it, you have to backup. Okay. Then, updates. I mean, how many of you have found uh, an outdated extension in your in your site? Yeah? Okay. How many of you were more than two versions behind in the Joomla core at uh, any point? Yep. You see, it happens. It's very easy to forget to update something, but you really have to put that in your site building and site management process. You always have to update, and if possible, update yesterday. Hackers are not going to wait for you to update. When a vulnerability goes public, they know that before you do. They know that before the developer has the opportunity to provide a patch. So when you see a new version of a software coming out, install it. It's, uh, it's a key concept to making your, your site safer. Most of the hacks that I have seen on Joomla websites were because they had uh, a very, very old version of, uh, of a component or even a template. I mean, you know, templates are also extensions, they have PHP code. Modern templates, uh, they're running on PHP frameworks and it is very possible that uh, all this huge pile of code has some vulnerability inside it. So if, you, uh, if you're if you using um, a, a template for many template club, check for updates, they provide frequent updates, they just don't announce them in a very prominent way and most of those updates are security related. Another thing that you have to do is to protect your Joomla site backend. The most obvious way for a hacker to get hold of, uh, of your Joomla website and do his funky stuff is to go to your Joomla site's last administrator. He gets a login page. He knows that most likely your login username is admin. How many of you have changed that? Okay, that's about 40% of the people in here. So 60% of you, I know your username. All I need is your password. If you don't protect your backend, I can write uh, a nice script which tries to brute force your password. Um, in this age of uh, cloud computing, I can do that a distributed script and within a few hours I can get your password, log into your website, kick you out, and I have, your, I have taken your website hostage. You don't want that. So, what you need to do is to actually uh, not allow anybody else except you and your other administrators have access to the site backend. How can you do that? There are two ways to do that. The easy way is to password protect it using <coughs> what Apache already offers. If you're on a, <coughs> I'm sorry, if you're on a commercial host, 
then most likely they have a file manager and they have an option to password protect the directory. So go ahead and protect your administrator directory. So if a, if a hacker wants to brute force your password, he will first ha have to figure out the username and password to just see the login screen and then start trying to, to hack your administrator password. You're putting a big obstacle in their way and unless they're very determined to do that, um, they won't even bother. There is a drawback in, uh, in this method. Many, um, many components put files in the back end and they try to access them from the front end. So if you do the password protection, then your front end site will ask for a for username and password, which is not very good. So there is the other method that uh, in order to get a hold of the administrator and lo login page, you have to type your URL slash administrator, question mark, and a secret word. It's a, it's a method that I believe was first introduced by an extension called Say Secure. Uh, it used to be free, now it costs something like uh, three or four euros. It's a, it's a, very, great, it's a very good idea to implement that. Um, also my software admin tools professional does that. Um, so if someone types in your domain slash administrator, they just get back to the front end. They don't get the, the login page. They have to guess what your secret word is. Um, so with these two methods, you can actually enhance the security of your site by adding a layer of, of obscurity. And this is one of the very few cases where security uh, based on obscurity is a good thing. Have you ever heard of 777? Yes, it's the neighbor to the number of the beast. Why? These permissions are like having this great house with a very fortified door and leave it open. 777 permissions mean that uh, anybody on that server can write to that directory. So what gives is that most people are using shared servers. You're not the only, the only user, you're not the only site on that server. There are a ton of other sites. So the easiest way to hack you if you have this kind of permissions is for me to create a site on the same server as you, and then guess what is, uh, uh, what is the path to your site. This is not uh, so hard. Most servers do not provide any kind of, uh, of security in the file system, so I can just browse through, find out where your site is, put my files in there, run them over the web. I have taken over your website. And this is a very, very common method of uh, of hacking, actually, uh, it's, uh, I, see, I usually see in the Joomla forum someone says, uh, I, "My site was hacked, and it keeps getting hacked. And what am I doing wrong?" And they have 777 permissions all over the place. So, uh, if you want same permissions, this is what you have to do. If your server is running SUPHP or Apache's mod ITK, which it should, if it is a shared host. The same permissions for directories are 755, which means that the owner user can do anything and everybody else, including the web server, can only read and browse the contents of those directories. And the files should have 644 permissions, which means that the owner can read and write to them. So the owner is mostly, most likely your FTP user. And everybody else, including, including the web server, can only read from them. And this is the kind of permissions you want. Uh, now, if, he, if your server does not use SQPHP or mod ITK um, and you can't really move hosts because that's what I suggest, uh, but sometimes you can do that because your client has paid for the hosting, but for them, but what you do, uh, you might really have uh, you, you might really need to have a directory readable and you will need 777 permissions. So um, one way to deal with this problem is to actually neuter those permissions. Even though anybody can write to that directory, nobody should be able to read from the directory directly from the web. Because what a hacker would do is to uh, place a malicious PHP file which does some, some hacking uh, thing inside that directory and then access it over the web. You can place a .hc access with these two very simple lines, order, deny, com, allow, deny from all, 
and this tells Apache that anything inside that directory is not web accessible. If you try to access anything over the web in that directory, it will say 403 forbidden. So even though a hacker can, can upload a hacking script, so what? He can't use it. So you're pretty much safe. Now, how many of you are feeling like sitting ducks? None? You do. OK. You have self-consciousness, master. <laughs> You're self-conscious. Yep. Why can you be a sitting duck? Okay. I, I will do a small poll. I want, your, uh, I want you to raise hands. How many of you are using a, a super administrator with a username admin on any site? Okay, one. Uh, how many of you have uh, no idea what the super administrator ID is uh, or have never changed it? You'll know, okay, oh, that's a great audience. Yeah. Uh, how many of you are using the JOS prefix on a live site? The JOS database prefix on a live site? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. So we have a few sitting ducks here. <laughs> okay, l last time I tried that, um, there were a lot more sitting ducks. <laughs> so things are improving. I'm proud of that. Next year, uh, I probably won't have to do this presentation. <laughs> so, mind your prefix. By default, Joomla installs with a, data, with a database uh, table name prefix of uh, JOS underscore. The thing is that everybody knows that. And if someone tries to, to create a hacking script, the, the safe bet is that uh, the user's table name is JOS underscore users. So they can create SQL to SQL commands to attack exactly this, this table. Um, by changing your prefix, you're adding uh, a little of uh, security through obscurity, which is very good re a, very, very, a very good idea. It will block script kiddies, because script kiddies can't really code. They can't really hack you. They, they're using pre-made scripts, which are a piece of crap, and they assume that you're using the JOS prefix, so you get rid of, uh, of many annoying hacks just by doing that. The other thing is that your super administrator has uh, an numerical ID of 62, or if you're using Joomla 1.6 or the upcoming 1.7 and so forth, it has a super, uh, it has a, a numerical ID of 42. The thing is that also everybody knows about that. So if I'm trying to, to hack your site and uh, through an SQL injection, for example, I can say that um, I want to attack the, the user with an ID of 62 or 42. Or I can also try a few more, uh, a few more IDs, 63 and 64, or 43 and 44, because these are the first users you're adding to your site, and most likely at least one of them is a super administrator. So if, if I can... Uh, if I can run a hack like that, then uh, most likely I can get myself keys to your site and then kick you out, deface your site, do anything I want, uh, install a backdoor, uh, steal your user passwords, anything. You will never know that. So it is very easy to change your ID from 62 to something else. As long as you try to do that uh, when you have just built your site before adding content. The reason is that all Joomla extensions who have anything to do with users, that is 90% of the extensions, um, are linking their content with a numerical ID. So if you have a site which was running for three years, it, it's going to be uh, a little bit more complicated to change the ID of the super administrator. The, the articles won't belong to you anymore. If you have a forum, uh, then your post count will suddenly be zero because you have a different ID and the forum uh, remembers the old ID you, you had on your user. But anyway, if you want to find out how to change your uh, super administrator ID, just like in, in every slide I have here, there is a link on the, on the top left corner uh, which links you back to one of the, of the articles that I have written uh, which explain this kind of stuff. So I, I also see many people taking uh, notes 
Uh, you don't really have to. I have uh, put the, the slides in a PDF file. I'm going to give the link uh, on the very last slide. So if you want to sit back and enjoy the presentation, it's, it's good. <laughs> okay. And now, the serious stuff. All we have said up until now is the basic things that you should all know and all do on all of your sites. And this is the security kung fu, the things that most people don't know. Uh, I hope that uh, most of you have read my articles in the Chumla Community Magazine and have a, a pretty good idea of what I'm, I'm going to, to talk about right now. Um, these are ways to uh, prevent hackers from identifying your site as a Joomla site and preventing them from uh, trying to hack it. So we have visual fingerprinting. Visual fingerprinting is a very common method of identifying if a site runs on Joomla or not. Because of some hidden secrets. Have you ever heard of the, the TP, the TMPL and the template parameters? You can put in the URL. So you can visit uh, www.tumla.org, question mark, uh, TMPL equals offline, and you will see the, offline, the Joomla offline page. It's as if the Joomla.org site went offline. No, it didn't. You just told Joomla to use that template. This is a very common way to figure out if a site runs on Joomla, or the TP equals one, which will just uh, render your template with all the module positions shown in the back mode, or you can uh, say template equals JA purity. Uh, if that is a Joomla 1.5 site, the site will display using the, uh, the purity template, which is one of the stock templates in, uh, uh, in Joomla. So by doing that, you say, yes, this site is Joomla. So I can try running some uh, Joomla uh, targeting hacks against it. If this doesn't work, script kiddies will say, no, this is not a Joomla site. I'll move on. They never look at the source. <laughs> so this is uh, a nice way to add security through obscurity is to add just a few lines in your .ht access. What we're actually doing with those lines is that um, if there is a, a TP template or TMPL parameter in the URL, we throw a forbidden error, 403 forbidden. Uh, however, if uh, you have TMPL equals component or system, these are required by many extensions, so uh, we had exceptions for them. The next thing is PHP itself. PHP has a very big mouth. It likes to advertise what version it, of PHP is running on your, on your server. So the first thing that uh, your web host has probably done is uh, set the PHP dot um parameter for not exposing PHP to the web server. That's cool. So you think that no one can find out which version of PHP you're using. and They cannot figure out that you're using a very outdated version of PHP and bring down your server. If you honestly believe that, well, you're wrong. You can try that. Joomla.org slash question mark equals and this pretty long string. That's one of, uh, of PHP's Easter eggs. I if you pass one of those IDs in the URL of a PHP script, PHP will render an image, and this image is different in its version of PHP. So by taking a look at the image, I can know which version of PHP are you running. So uh, when I run that, uh, Joomla.org was running PHP 5.2. That was many months ago. I think they have upgraded to 5.3 now but they're not blocking this kind of attack yet. If you have a laptop and manage to get an internet connection here, which is pretty difficult, you can try it. Uh, it, it is actually very easy to block this kind of, of attack. Uh, well, why, you ha why, why you need to block this kind of attack? Because um, if your server is not running the latest and greatest version of PHP, then probably your PHP has security vulnerability. And a smart hacker can do that. He can figure out that you're using a vulnerable version of PHP and using just the URL, pass some data which freak out PHP and expose vulnerabilities in the code. 
and he will be most likely able to either collect information about your site or hack it. Um, if you're using PHP 5.2 up to 5.2.16 on a 32-bit system, anything except Linux in 64 bits, then by passing uh, a URL parameter, you can actually bring down the entire server. You can run a denial of service attack because PHP will enter an infinite loop trying to parse a number. It will never be able to do that and the server is dead within minutes. That's a very easy way to bring down the site, okay? You didn't hear it from me, but it's already on the web. <laughs> so in order to block this kind of attack, you just need two lines of .hd access code. They filter out all these uh, PHP Easter eggs and forbid them. Uh, the only downside to, to doing that is that when you run PHP info instead of the PHP logo, you will see a broken image icon. But that's okay. <laughs> you don't really want to see the PHP logo, you just want to see the PHP info. Have you ever heard of Blind Elephant? Who has? Nobody? Really? Okay. So, Blind Elephant is one of the many fingerprinting scripts that hackers can use to identify the exact CMS and version that your site is running on. How do they do that? Well, let's take Joomla for example. Joomla has a media directory and inside it there is a system directory and inside it there are some JavaScript, uh, some JavaScript and CSS files. From one version to another, these, uh, these files change a little bit. They're not always the same, so if you can download the file and take an MD5 hash of it, you can know pretty much uh, which version of Joomla has that file. If you can do that with a lot of files, uh, then you can deduct the exact version of, uh, of Joomla that is running on, on your website. The same gives with uh, the init translation files. How many of you are aware that you can access the init translation files from the web directly from the web browser? You can type in a URL and download the init file. Okay, only two, oh, three, four? Okay, four out of 40? Yep. <laughs> yes. You can actually type in a URL to a, to a language file, download it. Each version of Joomla has different strings. That's why we need a language update on each version of Joomla. There you have it. You know which version of Joomla is running on the website. So, Blind Elephant pretty much uh, looks like this. Uh, I, th this is a screenshot from, uh, from a run I had done, uh, I think, uh, uh, last year in September. Uh, Joomla 1.5.18 was the latest version back then. So what I did, I, I, I had a, a few sites on my, on my local host and I said, uh, okay, Blind Elephant, try to access this site and tell me which version of Joomla it is running. And it said, yeah, it's either 1.5.17 or 1.5.18. That was very accurate. And it only took three seconds. And I was able to run the same thing against Joomla.org. They didn't have any kind of, of protection. And I tried a few other Joomla sites. I was able to figure out which version of Joomla they were running. So what happens is that if that was a live site and I had forgotten to update it for a while, now Joomla 1.5.22 uh, is out and the site is still running 1.5.18. Uh, there are a lot of security issues now known. There was a huge XSS attack, which was fixed in uh, 1.5.20, if I recall correctly. So using that, I, I would figure out that you're running a vulnerable version of Joomla and attack your site very easily. You would be like a sitting duck to me. So. What can you do to stop this kind of attack, not letting other people know which version of Joomla you're running? One way to do that is to actually do HTTP refer filtering using .htx code. So if a request doesn't come from your website, it is denied access. The common thing about um, all those fingerprinting scripts is 
that they're not very smart, they're, they're not trying to, to spoof their HTTP headers, they're not pretending to be visitors coming from your website. They just say, I'm, I'm a random script trying to access this file. And you can block them with this kind of very lame access code. And I repeat, this is a very lame way to do that, but it works. Now that we have talked about what you can do in uh, in dot x in dot ht access, um, I want to spend a few minutes uh, talking about. Extent, yeah. Uh, one question about yes. The change in uh, the dot ht access. Uh, are there any disadvantages apart from the one you mentioned before? That, uh, are there any potential disadvantages changing making this kind of change? From the, from from this code. Well, uh, for, for, uh, with the previous examples, there are no side effects because you're blocking stuff that uh, your visitors do not use on their sites. Uh, with this one, you may have a very, very rare case where the HTTP refer is completely blank. Uh, I think this only happens with Firefox 4. If you try to, to link from an HTTP site to an HTTPS site, the refer is blank. It doesn't pass the refer uh, through the SSL barrier. Uh, but yeah, this is something that you can work around in .dot ht access. Yep. Hmm? Yes. Yes, that, that could also be an issue. Um, so, uh, if you take a look at uh, at this link, uh, it links back to an article which will link you to my master.htaccess file. Uh, in there, I have many more .htaccess rules that I couldn't fit on uh, on slides like that. Uh, or you ca you can do much more advanced stuff like uh, block everything except the file extensions that really should be served over the web. <coughs> So people uh, couldn't access XML files, any files. Uh, you can uh, use this kind of code to, to block anything inside the images directory and only images directory, but not image stories. So um, an attacker cannot use the system images to fingerprint your site, but uh, a visitor can access the, the normal images you manage through, the, through Commedia, the Jumels Media Manager. Yes, you can do that. There is no one size fits all in, in security. You have to take a look at the exact site that you have, uh, what is the, the components it is using, what it is trying to accomplish, how users are actually accessing it, and then customize your security based on this information. It's, it's not a, a generic advice. That's why there are security consultants, okay? <laughs> There are more threats to your sites than the ones I mentioned, and these are, these are all threats that can happen at the extension level, not in, uh, uh, not in, the, not in the Joomla level. Joomla is pretty much secure right now, especially Joomla 1.5 is rock solid. Um, things that, that can happen in extensions, first you have cross-site scripting. Have you ever heard of cross-site cross -site scripting? It is the, the ability of an attacker to insert JavaScript code and post it to your site, and your component does not filter out the JavaScript. So what can happen is that uh, when another visitor when another visitor opens the page, um, we, we can steal his cookie or redirect him to a malicious site and perform all these kind of attacks, and you would never know that that it happens. Um, a more serious threat is remote file inclusion. On most uh, servers, I don't know, uh, how many of you here are uh, PHP developers? Okay, most of you, all right. Uh, so most servers have um, URL F open wrappers enabled by default, which is a very unsafe setting. It allows uh, anybody to, to include a file from a remote server. So some uh, extensions are vulnerable. Uh, when you're passing the name of, of the view, they, uh, they will try to, to load 
whatever you pass .php from their directory. However, if you if you pass a, a URL, they will load the URL, so you can take code from uh, from an attacker server and run run it on your server without needing to have write access on your server. And they can remotely hack your, your site like that. Uh, this is a very, very nasty attack. This is uh, one of the, of the highest priority uh, security threats that can uh, happen in, a, in an application. And unfortunately, they do happen. Another thing is local file injection or local file inclusion. Um, both names are valid, uh, which is that um, an extension can load an arbitrary file of your server's file system. This is uh, usually being exploited to, to load a different file, for example, uh, the server's uh, password file and dump it on the browser. This is also a very serious attack. Uh, both of those two attacks can be blocked very easily in your code by uh, making sure that your view name is um, is passed through the CMD filter in Joomla, so it only contains alphanumeric characters and underscores. Check that the file name that it references exists on the local file system using JFile exists, and you don't have to worry any longer about these two attacks. It's very easy to to work around them. Unfortunately, many developers are not aware of that, and that's why we have vulnerable extensions. My favorite one. SQL injections. These are uh, the best kind of attack that the hacker can hope for. It's like having direct access to your to your site's database without needing to go through a database administration tool. If there is a site with an SQL injection vulnerability, uh, I can gain super administrator access within three minutes. I will just have to access three URLs, and that's it. I will then be able to manage your site as a super administrator. I have actually done that as a demonstration to a client when he said that, no, my site is not vulnerable. And I said, yes, it is. And he said, no, you can do that. Want to bet? Yes. <laughs> not rich, but I managed to go by. <laughs> And SQL injections is something that cannot really be worked around using uh, firewalls and stuff like that. There is always a very high, uh, a, a high false negative uh, ratio when trying to detect SQL injections. So the only reliable way to work around this kind of attacks is to uh, have proper code which properly escapes uh, all the variables before passing them through the database. I mean, it's 2011. The uh, J database class has been around since, I don't know, uh, at least 2007. I think it was, the escaping was there since the Mambo days for almost a decade. And there are still people not using that? Why? I mean, come on. It's, uh, it's the kind of attack that shouldn't exist anymore. Um, another very common attack is cross-site request forgery, which means that an attacker can uh, submit forms on your site without having been on your site first, so he can run an automated script. And this is also very easy to work around. Uh, if you're a developer, you probably know about the JHTML uh, token function. If you, if you do that, then uh, there is a token uh, which has to be passed with its request. And this will slow down the attackers because they first have to fetch a page from your site and then submit a form. And all this round trip takes a lot of time so they can't reliably and very speedily brute force their way through your site. Um, brute force password cracking, as I said, you have to protect your administrator. And it would be very cool if Joomla had a feature which would disallow super, admin, super administrator login on the front end because, okay, you have protected your administrator, but in the front end, uh, an attacker can guess your, uh, your username and he can try to brute force your password. Um, 
there is currently no such feature no such feature in Joomla. Um, there is not even such a feature in Joomla 1.6 because if you disable login for the user, you disable login for both front and back end. It's not really useful, <laughs> not being able to log in at all. Many people have actually locked out, have been locked out of their Joomla 1.6 sites during the first uh, the first days of the release when they were messing around with the ACLs. So probably this is uh, a very good feature request to do uh, on ideas.joomla.org, guys. Yeah. I, I would uh, code that feature. I already have that in Admin Tools Professional. I could donate a code. Um, and of course, the other kind of very irritating attack is spamming and email harvesting. And this is uh, uh, pretty much very few things that you can do about that. If you're, if you're developing an extension, it is able to send out emails. Be extra careful. Don't make it too eager to send emails. Don't make it uh, too easy for users to define emails. And if they can do that, verify that, uh, that the emails belong to, to the user. Um, I'm not sure if you're, uh, how many people from here are using uh, uh, com contacts for, for a contact form on your sites? The, the standard Joomla contacts thing? Okay, don't. <laughs> I can spam you, you know that? Or I can use your sites to, to spam other people. It's very easy. I know that uh, the security expert Jeff Channel, um, he has written a script to demonstrate that and he, sh uh, he shared his results, it was like, yeah. I knew that this would happen, but well, he wrote a code for that, that's cool. Yeah, and you can send out thousands of emails coming from my side. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. I'm not using com, com, content, uh, com contact anymore. <laughs> okay. So, uh, as I said, if you want to, to protect your site, uh, you can take a look at my master.hc access file. It's, it's a free thing. I maintain it. I release new versions of, uh, of this file every, every month or so. Uh, the, it, it has a lot of comments. You can uh, see how it works. You can propose new features. You can uh, propose changes. I'm very open to changes. Just do document what you're doing. Don't let me guess. Yes, please. <laughs> because the last time this happened, I had to, to, to spend two weeks emailing back and forth with uh, the other guy trying to figure out what he was thinking. Uh, he had very good ideas, and I included them, of course. Um, I'm also making Admin Tools Professional, as you can see. <laughs> uh, Admin Tools Professional is a security component for, for Joomla. I usually sell it for 20 euros for unlimited sites for a year. Uh, well, updates for a year, you can use it forever. Uh, and since uh, yesterday, uh, I won three J Oscars. Thank you very much, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm doing a, a special for, for three days. I'm giving 50% off if you use coupon, con, coupon code JOSCAR. So if you have clients who are interested in buying Admin Tools Professional, give them the code. It's just 10 bucks, and you have every, everything I, I have discussed so far, and then some. Um, one last thing before I can answer to your questions. Remember that security is a process. It is not something that you do today and forget about that. It is not something that you install and forget about it. It is always a process. Your sites are evolving. They are changing. The software is changing. The expertise of the hackers is changing. You always have to adapt to these uh, changing conditions. So proper security is a process. You have to always try to, to think ahead and question whatever you have done so far and figure out if there's more things you can do. Never say that my site is secure and will stay secure. I mean, a very secure site today, if we take a look at it next year, we'll say, this site is so insecure because everything has changed. Just remember that. So now for your questions. 
Ja, alles. Uh, you can use any of the form extensions. Uh, Blueflame ID has a fantastic forms extension that can be used uh, for contacts. Or, uh, I mean, basically contacts is just an HTML form which sends email to your site. Uh, you can pretty much create a, a, a very dummy component with a simple uh, HTML form and you can also integrate um, uh, a CAPTCHA extension right, like a ReCAPTCHA so that you don't get a lot of spam and that's it. Uh, it if, you're a, if you're not a developer it would take you a day to do that. If you're a developer it would take you an hour to do that and you can reuse it on all of your sites. It's, it's just uh, very easy. Yeah, uh, mod, sec mod security team uh, should PHP, which is a patch to to the mod PHP and mod ITK. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Definitely. Uh, mod security all by itself does nothing. You need to have uh, a proper rule set. Uh, I was aware of, uh, of two rule sets that existed right now. I wasn't aware of, uh, of the Joomla specific one. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I, I, I will have to look that up. That, that's cool, that's cool. But uh, the, of course, the, this is great if you're able to manage your own server because mod, uh, modifying mod security settings requires you to have root access. If you have a dedicated host or uh, a very good virtual private server where, uh, where you can actually uh, run private instances of Apache, then it is perfect. I believe you, ha you had a question? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, admin tools professional. Uh, it has a feature called .dot access maker, which is taking the master .dot access and allows you to customize that to a graphical user interface, so you don't have to muck around with uh, all those uh, uh, strange .dot access rules, which uh, sometimes look like line noise. Um, if, if you want to add exceptions for, for files, you have to, to escape uh, things because it's regular expressions. Yeah, all, all of that stuff can be very intimidating unless you're a developer. So uh, there you have it, .ac Access Maker make it, makes it easy for site integrators to, to maintain the master .ac Access very easily. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, you know, I have, I follow the work I've been doing for years, and I've lost a lot of the other stuff. Thanks. What I'd like to know is that, uh, you know, in your line of products, like you're like a new tool this month, if you continue to take into account, you know, uh, the security aspects that are specifically related to this kind of server, web server environment, Okay, uh, Lighty and Nginx both have their methods for creating URL rewrite rules. Everything I have shown is URL rewrite rules. It's not any black magic or something like that. So uh, there are free tools which, which can translate .htaccess access files to uh, Nginx and well, they're, they're sure for, for Lighty, I think there's also for Nginx, that they can translate the rules from .h access format to the format required for lighting and nginx so you can do that uh, anything else regarding permissions and stuff like that it it is actually um, unix file permissions it's not uh, specific to the web server so uh, 
if your question is if I'm going to uh, create uh, a feature to create rules f directly for, for Lighty and NCNX, my answer is uh, if they get a respectable market share, then yes, I will. Right now, they power uh, much less than half percent of, of the websites. NCNX is mostly used as a reverse proxy. Uh, it's, uh, it's Apache behind NGINX, so it's Apache needing the .hc access rules. Uh, for Lighty, uh, I'm, yeah, I had a site on a host which was using Lighty, and they had uh, some kind of, uh, of Lighty extension which allowed uh, using .hc access rules. Um, so uh, it's not a huge priority for me to, to create rules, especially for, for Lighty. Any more questions? No? Oh, yeah, Matt. Can I nominate your extensions for the best application for next year? <laughs> if there is a category like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, that because if anyone is going to be using the professional version of the first time, spend a day, you read the documentation, there is probably a focus of the documentation on it. It's phenomenal. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I say that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I, I will say that, that that software consists of three parts. It's code, it's documentation, and it's support. If you take one of them out, uh, you no longer have a product. You have a project which is not meant for end users. I mean, if, if you take a look at uh, Joomla, Joomla is big because it has code, it has documentation, even though it, uh, it, it's, it's not uh, an insanely great documentation, it's quite good, and it's, it has great support. And it's the same with all, uh, with all software products. There you have it. So, thank you very much. You have been a great audience. <laughs> have, have fun here. Thank you. If you, if you want the slides, uh, this is the URL where you can get them. If you have uh, one of those fancy phones, uh, you can just scan the QR code and it will directly pop up uh, in your mobile browser and you can bookmark it and then import it to your desktop. It's a big PDF file, it's 9.5 megabytes, okay? Don't try downloading, downloading it from the Wi-Fi here, it would be impossible. <laughs> I had to wait till 3 a.m. to upload it.